This is the first video in a series of videos going over the Dylan Redwine case. Now there's a trigger warning on this series because it is talking about a murder and there are some graphic topics. 13 year old Dylan found pictures of his father wearing lingerie and eating feces from a diaper. Then Dylan goes missing. Well, two days ago, Dylan's father, Mark Redwine, was found guilty of second degree murder and child abuse for brutally murdering his 13-year-old son. Prosecution says it happened in a fit of rage after he was confronted about the photos. Mark showed no emotion as the verdict was read out. Jury verdict count number one, murder in the second degree. We, the jury, find the defendant, Mark Redwine, guilty of count number one. Be quiet, please. Murder in the second degree. Jury verdict count number two, child abuse. We, the jury, find the defendant, Mark Redwine, guilty of count two, child abuse. This has been long awaited. Dylan went missing nine years ago. This is a breakdown of all the sections in the series, just so you know where we're at. Well, the intro's over. Now we're at a mother's last moments. Mark's indictment has a ton of information and I put the web address there if you wanna go look at it. Dylan Redwine was last seen alive November 18th, 2012, when he goes for a court ordered Thanksgiving visit to his father's house. He flies there. During this time, Dylan's parents, Mark and Elaine, were in a custody battle. Dylan and Mark didn't get along. The last time he was there, they were arguing and fighting. Dylan didn't want to visit Mark and he said he was uncomfortable around his father. But Elaine said she didn't have a choice, she had to send him. Paul says Dylan was so opposed to visiting his father, she consulted with her lawyer about it. But because it was court ordered, the family didn't have a choice. Amber Harrison is the lawyer who gave that advice and she said this while attempting to hold back tears. I told her that she had to put Dylan on the plane or she would be charged with contempt of court. In the next clip, Elaine accounts her very last interactions she had with her son, Dylan. He was boarding his plane, he was walking away, and he always called me when he was just turning for mom. And uh, I said, oh, you're too old to give your mom a hug. And came back and gave me a hug. In this video, I'll be discussing some photos in the Dylan Redwine murder case. So there is a trigger warning because it's both talk of murder and graphic content. Dylan and his brother, Corey, came across some photos of their father. In the photos, their father was eating feces. I don't know if I can share those photos on TikTok. I don't know if I want to share those photos. It's a person eating poo poo, okay? But there is public evidence at this address. So if you want to see them, you can. It's starting at number 17. In his testimony, Corey said that he and his brother accidentally discovered the photos on their father's computer during a road trip in 2011. Their father was sleeping and they were looking at the photos in a locked bathroom. And then Corey took photos of the photos and saved them on his phone. Corey said that the discovery of those photos ruined Dylan's relationship and image of his father. He says, Dylan lost any reason for him to look up to Mark that day. Now we're to August 2012. Corey sent the photos to his father in a dispute. Mark was upset that Corey had left liquor bottles at his property while he was staying there with his girlfriend. So Mark sent photos of the liquor bottles to Corey, and in response, that's when Corey texted the photos to his father. He said, hey, I've got some pictures too. You are what you eat. Then Mark responds to Corey telling him he's a thief for taking the photos and said he was just trying to hurt him, just like his mother, Corey's mother, Mark's ex-wife. Well, I guess Dylan wanted to follow his big brother's lead because also in August of 2012, he wanted to use those photos as leverage against his dad in an argument. Dylan texts this to his brother. Hey, send me those poop pics of Papa because he gave me a speech about you guys being a bad example and I want to show him who he really is. But Corey says he did not send the photos to his brother and it's unclear from his testimony if Dylan confronted his father in August 2012 regarding the photos because we're gonna get to November in a second. The prosecution is arguing that Mark murdered his son. This was November of 2012 after being confronted about the photos. It should be noted that Corey doesn't think the photos are the only thing that triggered Mark. He said this talking about Mark. I think Dylan had a lot more than just pictures he wanted to get across to Mark. He's just a sick person, but he's fully aware of his actions and he's fine with being that person. 
This concludes the photos section and in the next video I'll start Dylan's last moment section. In this video I'm discussing the details of the murder of Dylan Redwine so there is a trigger warning. So it's November 2012, Dylan has just arrived at his father's house for his court-ordered Thanksgiving visitation. He asked to stay at his friend's house the night of his arrival, but his father Mark said no. So Dylan made plans to visit his friend's house the next morning at 6.30 a.m. But the visit never happened. Dylan is in blue. So Dylan's last phone activity was at 9.37 p.m. Then the next morning, his friend texted him at 6.46 a.m. asking, where are you? But he received no response. The messages go on to the next page. His friend was sending him more. Dude, you need to call somebody, anybody ASAP. We're all worried about you. Your mom called, she's worried, bro. You know, but he's not going to get a response. By this time, Dylan's father has already murdered him. November 19th, 2012, 59 year old Mark Redwine reports Dylan missing. He tells investigators that his son was asleep when he woke up that morning. Then he goes on some errands and when he returned, Dylan was gone. But investigators were immediately suspicious. Later, once it goes to trial, Mark's defense will be that Dylan wandered off, then succumbed to the elements or wild animals. This concludes the section Dylan's last moments. Moving on to the aftermath. After Dylan is reported missing, investigators find evidence of Dylan's blood all throughout Mark's house. It's on the couch, it's on the floor in front of the couch. It's on the corner of the coffee table. It's on the floor beneath the rug and it's on the love seat. Mark's girlfriend at the time gave the explanation that Dylan had cut his finger a year prior. That's what the blood was. Later at the trial, prosecution will say if a small amount of blood had been found in one spot, then that could be explained by a single event, like a cut. However, the more numerous positive tests for blood were concerning, indicating movement around the room during a bleeding event. Dylan's mom said that after she learned her son was missing, she immediately got in her car and drove the six hours to go search for her son. She also said she didn't have any knowledge about her son confronting Mark about the photos. From the beginning, Elaine was saying, this is Mark, she did not trust him, and she thought he was hiding something. These are text messages between Mark and Elaine. Mark is in blue. Elaine, I'm wondering if you have heard from Dylan. I've been trying to reach him all afternoon. Elaine says, it's really worrying when I'm seven hours away and get a message like this from you. I haven't heard from Dylan today. Where did you leave him or last see him? In this video, I'm discussing the details of the murder of Dylan Redwine, so there is a trigger warning. Upon hearing of her son Dylan's disappearance, of course, Elaine texts him. Elaine Hall later reading a text message she sent to Dylan. She learned of his disappearance. I said, Dylan, please be safe. Mom is here to come get you, son. Search teams were sent out looking for Dylan. Vigils were held. There was a benefit dinner. The family even raised money for the search by selling $5 rubber bracelets that said, Find Dylan Red Wine. The pictures I found said justice for Dylan, so if I had to guess, it would be that they changed the verbiage as the case progressed from a missing persons case to a murder. In just one month, Crime Stoppers, along with other donors, raised $50,000 that they could offer as a reward. February 2013, they appear on the Dr. Phil show. At this point, Dylan is still a missing persons case because his remains hadn't been found yet. They are so frustrated with how Mark is handling it. They say he knows something, and then Mark refuses to take a polygraph two different times. I'm going to give the Dr. Phil show its own video at the end of the series. Also, in this same period where Dylan is still considered missing, Mark's ex-wife, not Elaine, the ex-wife before that, Betsy, she gets interviewed. She called investigators on her own accord because she was worried that Mark may have hurt Dylan. She said back in the 80s, she went on a camping trip with Mark and something he said frightened her so much that it stuck with her all these years. They're out in the middle of nowhere and he said if he ever had to get rid of a body, he would leave it in the mountains. Also in their own custody battle, because he has children with Betsy too, she said that Mark told her that he would kill the kids before he let her have them. 
and Betsy's sister confirms that Mark said that. This concludes the aftermath. And I'll just start things take a turn in the next video because I don't think I can fit it at the tail end of this one. I'm going to be discussing the details of the murder of Dylan Redwine, so there is a trigger warning on this video. June 2013, something big happens. A cadaver dog locates some of Dylan's remains off an ATV trail. And where was that ATV trail located? Less than 10 miles from Dylan's father Mark's house. And yes, Mark owned an ATV. And yes, Mark was very familiar with the road. Witnesses also said they saw Mark riding an ATV down the same road where Dylan's remains would end up being found. And they saw him just days before the search team went out looking for Dylan. And Mark did not attend the search, by the way. Although, according to this picture caption, Mark did attend another search. Upon Dylan's remains being found, yes, now people had answers, but no, this was not the answer anybody wanted. Here's a picture of a restaurant owner taking down Dylan's name upon hearing this news. So immediately after hearing the news that Dylan's remains have been found, Brandon, who is Dylan's half-brother and Mark's son, has a very odd conversation with Mark. In the one hour phone conversation, he said Mark lacked any emotion. It was as if they were talking about baseball, not a child that they just learned was no longer coming home. But what struck Brandon as extremely odd was that Mark mentioned blunt force trauma at least four times. Mark said investigators would have to find the rest of the body, including the skull, before they could determine if this was Dylan's cause of death. This completely shocked Brandon, and yes, Dylan did have blunt force trauma to his skull, but that hadn't been found yet. August 5th, 2013. Investigators decide to do another search of Mark's home now that Dylan's remains have been found. During that search, Molly, a sniffer dog, picks up the presence of cadaver scent in various locations, including the living room and the washing machine. The scent was picked up in another place, Mark's clothes that he was wearing November 18th and 19th, 2012. But Molly's not done. February 13th, 2014, she picks up more human cadaver scent in Mark's truck. Now we get to November 1st, 2015. Hikers stumble across Dylan's skull. It's about a mile and a half from where Dylan's remains were initially found. Mark's indictment says that's indicative of a human moving it because no animal would transport a skull a mile and a half. Dylan's skull also had injuries consistent with blunt force trauma, something caused by a tool, not something caused by an animal. Prosecutors say that Mark decapitated his own child in an attempt to get rid of evidence that could link the injuries back to him. Mark's defense will say Dylan ran away and this was caused by a wild animal. On March 22, 2017, Mark Redwine was arrested and charged with the murder of his 13-year-old son. He was held on a $1 million cash-only bond. And there is body cam footage of when he was arrested. Just keep your hands up. Don't move, bro, okay? Do not move. Drop a cigarette. He's detained. Mark is detained. Mark, do you have any weapons on you, sir? No, sir, I do not. And they say that they had a, uh, a warrant for murder second for you. I'm sorry? I have no idea what that's about. Okay. Mark didn't live in Colorado anymore. That's where he committed the murder. He now lived in Bellingham, Washington, so he needed to be extradited back to Colorado. He tried to fight it, but ended up getting extradited August 14th, 2017. Pete Klismet, criminal profiling consultant. He got hired by the investigation to review the evidence. And back in 2017, he called it. He called what was going to happen. Mark Redwine, 17-1. There's no question in my mind that this case will go to trial. Mark will not plead guilty uh, because he's the narcissist. He believes he can lie his way out of anything. And that's exactly what happened. Initially, the trial was set for November 26, 2018, but it ended up getting delayed for a few reasons, from Mark's attorney being arrested for domestic violence, and then there was a mistrial because a member of the defense had COVID symptoms. 
finally, we get to a couple days ago, July 16th, 2021, where Mark was convicted by a unanimous jury and found guilty of second degree murder and child abuse. This was following weeks of trial arguments. I forgot my table of contents. So we ended Mark's arrest and now we're starting the trial. Dylan's half-brother Brandon testified that when he found out about his missing younger brother, he took his family, his kids, and he immediately drove from Arizona up to Colorado to help with the search. But once he got there, he could not get his father involved. He also shared how they drove up Middle Mountain Road, which is where Dylan ended up being found, to search for Dylan. But after only 20 minutes of looking, Mark told the group that Dylan was not up there. Had you seen Mark Redwine engaging in those types of activities to get involved, make noise, that kind of thing? I did not. Was that a source of frustration for you? Yeah, it was frustrating. It's your son get involved. Did he come across as upset or sad or crying that Dylan was missing any of those things? No, I didn't really see any emotion. And that was something that got my attention too. Corey Redwine's father murdered his little brother, Dylan. In the trial, he was asked if he still loves his father and his response was heartbreaking. Do you love your father? Yes. To this very day, how do you feel about it? I still love him. I, I, I wish I didn't have to be here. After Michael Doherty gave his closing arguments, Deliberation didn't take very long. It only took the jury six and a half hours. Now this comes after four weeks of listening to testimonies. Upon hearing the verdict, Mark had no reaction. Jury verdict count number one, murder in the second degree. We the jury find the defendant, Mark Redwine, guilty of count number one. Be quiet, please. And here's what Corey had to say outside the courthouse after hearing the verdict. He's, you know, guilty for killing my little brother, and that'll be the last um, time, you know, I ever see her. He'll be the last day he'll ever be in my life. Mark has not been sentenced yet. That won't happen until October 8th at 9 a.m., and he will remain in custody until that happens. He faces up to 48 years in prison. This concludes the trial section. The Dr. Phil Show, that one's getting its own video because looking back at it now, knowing what we know, it's chilling. Elaine Hall and Mark Redwine go on the Dr. Phil show only three months after their son Dylan's disappearance. At this point, he's still considered a missing persons case because his remains have not been found. We now know that Mark murdered his son, so watching this Dr. Phil episode is chilling. And Mark has a terrible attitude, which makes sense now. He's not a grieving parent. He's a murderer making excuses. You were the last one to see him. Why didn't you call me? Why do I have to call you when you lost our son? That doesn't make sense. And this is exactly why I would want to communicate to you because you can't sit here and have a civil conversation with me. Because you want I'm to be angry with accusing you for me and blaming our son. I'm angry. You've said with you. that several times. And the brother Corey Redwine is there too. He's angry. He's hurt. His brother went missing three months ago. He doesn't understand why his father won't get involved in the search efforts. And Mark's ex-girlfriend is there. She jumps to defend him. I'm a straight shooter and I'll tell it like it is. And what I would say to Elaine is how dare you point the fingers at somebody when you have no proof. I wonder how she feels about Mark today. Also, Dr. Phil did not like what she had to say. There's one statement you made, which is to look at her and say, how dare you? Right. Because, lady, you don't have the right to speak to a mother with a missing child with that kind of judgment, and you don't know what she's going through Correct. right now. I and so then there's the polygraph. Mark says he'll take one, but then he backs out. Are we going to do this? Well, that's my whole point of being here and talking to you now, okay, is addressing my concerns and the things that are bothering me. Well, as I said, it's got to be voluntary or we don't do it. This is all happening way too quickly. I just feel so overwhelmed. Then Mark agrees to take one the next day once he's had a good night rest. And surprise, he backs out of that one too. Let's do it. I'll ask the camera to, to give us some privacy and we should be done in about an hour and a half. A question was asked if I gave an honest answer to it. The question was, do you feel well enough to take this test? And my response to that question was no. They give it to him after that. 
and I have asked you to do things to eliminate yourself so we can direct resources to other people and you won't do one damn thing to help. Elaine knew, she knew Mark did this. You're his father. How could you do this to him? Elaine, I don't have, I don't know where Dylan is. I haven't had I anything believe, to do with this. I don't, I know that's a lie. I know you had something to do with this. Yes, yes.